you hear me? Talk that way. Talk that way? <laughs> okay. Yep. Alrighty, so we're gonna we're gonna do some cooking today. And um, what was it? We're gonna do some uh, chicken strips with uh, fries, uh, rosemary garlic fries, uh, jalapeno poppers, and because we realized there was gonna be a delay between things coming out of the oven, we're also gonna do a uh, strawberry shortcake uh, whim. Yay! What's up? Oh, you might have to clo uh, delete it and then redo the window again. It's stupid. I had the problem earlier. You want me to help you? No, that's okay. Okay. Well, while she's trying to fix that, which, yeah, it yeah, totally disappeared. <laughs> We're going to start doing some fries. Um, so we got some russet potatoes here. Nothing spectacular. And uh, we're going to chop these up. We're going to do two different cuts just for funsies. The first thing I'm going to do is, I actually got a salad spinner for, for convenience sake. I don't know if we can see it on the camera, but yeah. Ooh, look. The um, reason I'm doing that is because, one, this has a strainer, and we can also uh, use it as a bowl. It makes life so much easier. So I'm going to fill up some water real quick. While that's going on, we're going to... Oh, wrong knife. We're going to chop... Uh, we're going to do two different types of cuts. We're going to do, uh, basically, wedges. Just cut this guy in half. And then uh, quarter him. Like so. And, oh, bar's almost there. So we got like nice little wedges. These are this is actually more of a less if you're not really experienced at cutting at all. So you don't have to, you know, remove fingers or anything by accident. What's up? Not no. I figured I'd go through it as we need it. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, the other cut we're going to do, what's up? No, having a problem still? <laughs> I know. Have I washed my hands, Kappa? No, no, I've not. As a matter of fact, I've, what is that? Proper hygiene? No, having issues? No, I got it. Oh, you did get it? Okay. Okay. Um, the other cut, it's called a bayonet cut, and basically it looks like bayonets, so we're going to cut them by uh, half an inch. And length, and we're gonna just do this little thing, and then a couple more cuts. And basically, it's just really long, so just like a bayonet. These are nice way reason about doing this is these cook a little bit more uh, quicker versus the the other cut that we just did there a second ago. Makes everything a little easier. I know I got a couple more tears, <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do one more bait or uh, wedge cut. Eighth them basically. Did you preheat your oven? Oh yeah, I should probably preheat my oven to 450. Whoops! I'm losing my darn mind today. All right, some more wedges. Has some some randomness to our mayhem. All right, yeah, could do a couple more bayonets. Whoops! Almost lost a finger. Yeah, potatoes are fun like that. Now the other fun thing is you'll notice that there's like white residue. That's why I'm putting out all the potatoes in the water. Is simply because they will start to brown if anyone's messed with potatoes before. They're awesome like that. These are a little fat. Whoops. All right, a couple more bayonets to go. And what we're going to do after this is we're going to strain them from the water. Mix them with a little oil, granulated garlic, olive oil. I just said olive oil. <laughs> Paprika and uh, granulated with onion and salt and pepper. Good lord, I'm losing my mind. Can you frame the, what you're putting them in? Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna put them into the bowl. I'll get there. We're just putting the potatoes in the water. I'm just going, talking ahead. Yes, my kids do put them in the water. Oh, we can do that. Here. Here's all my potato friends. Ten, as seen here. Ooh, this guy's, this is a fun little guy. He's got a little, a couple little eyes. Which, fun fact, uh, potatoes, you want to start growing them, you can actually toss them in a pot of water and they will start to grow. I'm not exactly sure how I'll do anything else beyond that because I'm not a farmer, but a couple different other different plants that do that. Um, romaine lettuce is a good one for that and onions. All right. Now also the nice thing about putting them in water is all the sediment and stuff starts to come off. And you'll see that it's starting to turn cloudy in this water. That's from the, uh, the white stuff from the, uh, the 
Tata. I can't remember what the enzyme is for the life of me. Alright, we that. Mushies around a little bit. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain this. We have the taters in the sink. And I need some olive oil. So we're going to use my big old jug of olive oil here. There we go. Don't do a ton. Then a little bit of green laid onion and garlic. Well, this is garlic in my hand. A little bit of paprika to give it a nice little color. Don't add too much of this. It will be spicy, especially if you get the Spanish stuff. Hungarian's a little sweet, though. And some salt for taste. Woo. Oh yeah, we gotta chop up the rosemary now. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why I, you're here. Funny if you cut your finger off during your life. That's horrible, man. You're a horrible person. Alright. Do some rosemary, which looks pretty much like pine needles. It has a wonderful smell, though. No? Okay, fair enough. Keeps on. You check all of it, it brings up the Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, that happens. Oh, my nose. Alright, strip them off. These are actually really great if you have shrimp or something like that. You can use them as skewers. It has a nice rosemary flavor to them. Alright, we're gonna do a quick mince on this. Yeah, you can use dry rosemary. The only problem with dry rosemary is it just flies everywhere when you try to chop it. You're going to have to use a coffee grinder. Other, and before you know it, now you got rosemary powder. It comes in a great convenient form now. And, alright, in there. Get in there, buddy. Actually, we're going to use a paper towel. This, this is never going to clean. <laughs> Hands are wonderful multi-purpose tools for that reason. <laughs> Alright. Get my taters in here. Give them a good old toss. Just get a nice even coat. So we put too much of everything in there and then it starts burning. It's never fun, trust me, I've done it a couple times. Whoopsie. And what we're going to do is we're going to put on a sheet tray. Now, you can line it with, like, parchment paper or aluminum foil. I actually got silicone mats. It's hidden here. Actually, no, let just take it off. It's, yeah, these things are wonderful for lazy people like myself. All you do is you, you basically throw everything on it. It comes right off. There we are. And we're just going to slide them right on. And these guys are going to take a while just because they're potatoes, which potatoes are essentially roots. So you're cooking a root. Which, they're delicious roots. <laughs> so starchy, though. Alright, come on. Even out. Some of these are going to take a lot longer because they decided bayonet was a fun idea. Wash my hands. And we're going to toss them in the oven. Uh, we're going to check them in about 40 minutes. Which gives us plenty of time to start prepping the chicken and the poppers. Actually, you know what, we'll do 35 for uh, argument's sake. Put you over here. So much stuff. Wipe down the board. Alrighty. Alright, now we're going to do chicken strips. Now, the fun thing about chicken strips are everyone's going to keep on calling them tenders for the end of the day, and I guarantee it, is simply because tenders imply that you're using the tenderloin of the chicken. We're not using the tenderloin. We're actually using the breast meat, which is connected to the tender, but they're about $2 more a pound. So, yeah, we're going to forgo that. Um, there's a couple little things we're going to need to do here. First things first, we're going to have to do a three, uh, I can't remember what it is, basically a breading method. Hence why I got these three bowls here with some lovely eggs and all that. Which actually, I'm going to crack these eggs first real quick. There we are. If the ingredients are difficult to read, try making your uh, video full screen. Alright. 
Now, the reason we're having eggs here is we're going to whip them real good and make them a little scrambled. That's just going to take a second though, but ooh, I'm going to make a mess over here. <laughs> but I just don't like messing with chicken grease or chicken guts everywhere while trying to mix eggs, so we're going to take care of that right now. Now, you can, if you have a blender or a food processor, this makes life simple, especially if you're doing like, I don't know, a dozen eggs. Of course, we're doing four, so I think it's overkill for what we're doing right now. But it is what it is. Hey, Blood Wolf, how you doing, man? And there we go. I'm not going to do anything with that anymore. Put him off there. All right, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these lovely chicken breasts. We're going to actually cut them into strips. So they cook a little faster. We can actually do these whole if you wanted to, and just cook it like you know, just fried chicken essentially. But it is what it is. So we're gonna actually do that a little faster. Actually, these guys are massive, so we've got to cut this in half. And this will actually, depending on how you cut it, is how long it's really gonna dictate how long you're cooking them. So that is why we're gonna do it the way it is. The smaller they are, faster to cook. It makes life simple. So basically how hungry are you, are you dictates it, or how lazy you are. And this is about a pound and a half of chicken. You can do about two pounds easily with what we're going to be doing here. All right, cut this in half. Also, fun fact, if you do not have a sharp knife, take this slowly. You don't want to lose appendages. Trust me, I've been doing emergency room enough time to know this. Put these back in here. And when we're done, we're going to have to sanitize my cutting board. Don't want to get E. coli. It's never fun. Or food, food illborn illness in general. Alright. Let's cut these into strips. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to season our flour. And since the chicken's so moist, it's just going to adhere right to it. And then we're going to dip in the egg wash, which will help uh, make a nice coating. You're gone. Put that there. Put you over here. Don't mind me, I'm just getting rid of stuff now. Hand washing, the funnest thing ever. Alright. Alright, we're gonna just take some basic all purpose flour. Make a mess all over my table. It is what it is, yeah. We're just going to grab a cup and see where we're at. Yeah, a little bit more. Won't hurt. Alright. You're gone for the day. Alright, put a little bit of salt in here for seasoning's sake. A little bit more. Alright. A little bit of granulated onion. A little bit more granulated garlic. I love garlic. Garlic's my friend. Uh, I'm doing fantastic, Mr. Wolf. Fantastic. We're going to do a little bit of paprika to add a little bit of color again. And we're going to just mix this guy up. Did salt pepper? Yes. Yes, I did. That was the first thing I put in there. Actually, I need a second cutting board. <laughs> I just realized I forgot to cut parsley. It's fine. And we're going to add panko breadcrumbs, which differentiate horrifically from regular breadcrumbs, which you can use regular breadcrumbs. The reason I like panko, and I'll sh put this in the camera real good, is if you can see there, they, oh there we are, they actually have a weird texture to them, it's because it makes them really crunchy, which basically, you know, it's like deep frying food without deep frying, which it makes it awesome. So there we are. And we need some time, and not literally in the sense of, you know, what time it is, but this, this lovely herb, it's in commonly in a lot of uh, chicken recipes and whatnot. So what we're going to do is basically we're just going to pull this off. Not even have to chop, it's great. Makes life so simple. Just going to do a couple sprigs of that, just start tossing it in there. Great in uh, a lot of doughs and stuff too. It's just a wonderful recipe, or uh, not recipe, uh, herb. Makes everything smell awesome. Alright. Do a couple more of these. The only downside is it takes forever to get all these off. 
don't want the stems on there, it's a little bitter. Then it's just like really hard and chewy. You don't want that. The reason we're adding this is one for flavor and color. Yeah. Flavor is always good, especially when you can add it later or early on. Um, you could easily add dry. The difference is, though, at the end of the day, um, taste. Like it's, it, it, I, I, I couldn't believe it myself when I actually, I use, I have a huge collection of dry spices, but actually adding fresh herbs a lot of the times to a lot of things makes it a lot easier. Um, the reason we didn't add fresh garlic to any of this is garlic burns super easy. So that's why we're using dry, dry garlic. You don't want burnt garlic. It's terrible. It's, ugh. All right. And I think we, we got plenty of time here. Yes, yes, you can insert time, really bad time jokes now. All right. Off you go. And I got a little tiny, teeny tiny cutting board over here. We're going to borrow for a moment. Yeah, I wasn't kidding when I said teeny tiny. So we're just gonna take some of this parsley. It's a uh, flat leaf. Come on, buddy. Come here. Give me some. Thank you. Bye, parsley. All right, we're just gonna go and uh, get all the big stems out of here real quick. We're just gonna chop all this up and toss that in there. Shouldn't take that much. Actually, this will all be all of it. All right. Uh, we good? Almost there. Okay. Oh, I can hear the fries. You know, that is a good sign when you start hearing the fries sizzling. Doesn't mean they're cooking, just means you're getting rid of all the water you left on them. I'm a terrible person. Alright, that should be plenty. Oh, there we are. Right, we're just gonna... I know. It's gonna take a while to bread all the chicken, so. It's a force of habit. <laughs> it's a work habit, unfortunately, going really fast, so please let me know if I'm going way too fast. And hello, lemons. I should probably be paying attention to what I'm doing while operating uh, knives, huh? Alright, that was really loud. Yeah, we're just going to do quick mints on this guy. You can also do the uh, same thing with uh, the thyme. You can use easily just use uh, dry parsley. Again, personal preference. If you're lazy or if you just, like, have a ton, you know, don't have the ton of time or money, dry is obviously the best way to go then. I definitely recommend if you don't have, you know, I think it's like a buck something for a sprig of parsley. And if you're not going to use it all, don't just buy dry, honestly. Don't waste your money. You can always use it for something else later, especially dry, since it doesn't go bad. All right. What do we do? Rinse my hand. Clean this all up. This is a mess. I made a mess again. Alright. Use that cutting board for later. Follower. Oh. Well, thank you. Appreciate the follow. Alright, and then. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm gonna butcher that, so I'm not gonna try, but thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Okay. And now, the, there is a reason for to this mayhem. The reason I have the chicken and all this into that, or actually let's mix this up before I go too far, uh, is simply put, this is how we're going to do everything. And you want every, It's a lot easier you have it now in this order because you start doing it, it's just good messy. And because these little things, you don't want to clean them 15 times, trust me. Just, just a word of caution. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with one hand. We're just going to dredge this guy in here. What we're going to do is get all the excess off, dump them in there. Just keep on working. The reason I'm not using the second hand is it's going to get, I'm going to have like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man fingers going on soon. It's going to be amazing. We're just going to do that. We're going to, we can't get them all in there, but we're going to get a good amount. Alright. Ooh, that gloopy sound. Okay. Woo. Ah. Should have totally got another one of those mats on the floor, honey. <laughs> Oh, this counter's so low. <laughs> it is what it is. Oh, what's going on there? Oh, I didn't fix that, uh, the, the, the file alert. It fixed itself. It was something to do with, uh, Twitch alerts. I don't know what it did, or what they did. Alright. If you guys got any questions, please, by all means, throw them out there. <laughs> what's wrong with eggy fingers? 
<laughs> like, no, you know what's funny though, Moo? I knew a guy who uh, worked at a restaurant that that's what they did. They would actually cook their, uh, you know, their big overflated fingers. They'd see who took the longest, which I don't recommend you do. <laughs> Deep fryers are not fun things. They hurt a lot. All right, you know, that looks good. We got, we got plenty in there. It's not there. Now we're going to just gloop this all around, make sure it's evenly coated. Because here's the fun part. All right. I want to make sure that all the excess, again, comes off of the egg. We're going to dump that on. We're just going to pat them really good. All right, cool. And we're just going to wash, rinse, and repeat. I know this is the funnest thing in the world right here. But if you like getting your fingers all like sorts of messy, this is this is right up your alley. You can tell how badly you were with the uh, stems if you find a ton of them. <laughs> all right, there we are. You want to make sure no, nothing like sticks to itself, so it's like one long, you know, piece of chicken. Because what it does sometimes it'll delay how long it takes to cook. Also, you can easily pound this out. Like if you want to make them like really long chicken strips or something insane like that, go right for it. Plenty of time to get to the poppers next. All right, there we are. Any more to go? Oh my lord, we got so much to go. <laughs> why, chicken? Why do you keep on taunting me? And again, we're using the. Uh, oh my lord, what the heck is that? That plastic thing <laughs> on the uh, sheet tray, which you could easily use wax paper or anything. Or I, I guess tin foil with a little bit of a uh, pan spray on it would work too. These things are silicone. There we go. Silicone mat. There we go. These things are wonderful. That way nothing stops to it. And what we're going to do after we get all these done finally, is we're going to take a little butter and just brush it lightly on top of them because it'll, get, it'll give them a nice brown color. Because unfortunately, we're not deep frying or anything, so baking them, they're just going to still kind of have that, like, I've been stuck in my house for the last six months look. So... That'll help uh, brown them up a little bit, give them a little color. Because unfortunately, uh, most of the stuff you buy pre-made, yeah, it's been through a deep fryer at least once. There we are. Come on. we got like ten more pieces to go after this. Sweet hallelujah. Also, we're going to have to get some more uh, panko in here. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. And you kind of want, you don't want the uh, the panko to soak in the egg. That's the other thing, they kind of lose its crunch. And then start turning the batter, which is crazy. Again, you don't have to use the panko breadcrumbs. I just like it because it gives that crunchy taste, which is amazing. And I shouldn't have dumped the, this whole thing in there at once. And you'll see why. Because it takes forever to coat all the chicken. <laughs> hey, kids, don't do this at home. All right, get rid of that. Look at all that mess. Good lord. Yeah, and the other thing that drives me crazy, flour on my skin drives me insane. So you're going to see me, like, trying to get rid of all this real quickly here in a minute. Oh, that's plenty of eggs still. Sweet. Yeah, you can see my fingers are starting to do the Stay Puff Marshmallow thing. Remember in chat? Hmm? Uh, would you start the egg fried stuff fingers? Yeah, I see. Taste them? No, I would definitely not taste them. <laughs> definitely gonna pass on the tasting part, but you know, each their own. Each their own. There we go. Actually, this guy's gone, so we're done with him. Clean as you go. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna sit here and do dishes live. That just doesn't sound exciting at all. So I'll, I'll forego and you know not do that for y'all. Actually, you know what? Do I have enough in there? I barely don't. Gonna... Come on, buddy. Come to me. There we go. There we are. How many cups are we up to? How many what? Cups of oh, I'd say we're probably at like easily three. <laughs> so yes, three, <laughs> three cups. Probably four if you're doing uh, obviously two pounds of chicken breasts. But chicken breasts are super cheap. I highly recommend going that way instead of tenders. 
Actually, you know what? Even better than that is uh, thighs. Thigh meat's amazing. Obviously, I wouldn't do it for this, but tacos, tacos and chicken thigh meat, amazing. Well, I'm just some random guy on the internet. You don't have to take my word for it. Trying to trying to make sure that there's plenty of room on here. Ah, come on, Matt. Come on, chicken. Be my friend. There we are. I don't remember. Did I put paprika? I don't think I put paprika in the flour. Oh well. Life will go on. Yes, what? Yes, oh, I did. Okay. Cool. Yay. But we'll have the recipe up later. We'll have it actually on YouTube and all that, other than what's on the side right now. Rice breasts are so expensive. Uh huh. Moo, are you fibbing? <laughs> all right. There we go. And we got the last two. Hallelujah. A little bit messy, but you know, whatever. Not the fun part. Got these guys gone. Oh, I almost made a mess there. Ah. Wash the hands again. Oh, God. Now, the bra biggest problem with this is it's going to take forever to come off. Thankfully, I have a wire bristle brush. Ah. What's up? Oh yeah, yeah, I totally live in the middle of a farm. I slaughter cows for fun. And then send pictures to Moo, because I'm a horrible person. Yeah. Alright. And what we're going to do is we're going to sanitize the work surface, which I don't know where we put the sanitizer. There we are. Yeah, we're going to do the bar here in a second. Actually, let's do that right now while we're cleaning. All right, so we're going to take a little saucepan. I don't have a microwave right now because I had to get lighting set up because, you know, reasons. Actually, you know what? Wrong wrong pan. That's for something later. But yeah, it's, it's hilarious how many lights we have right now. Right, we're going to do, like, I don't know, like two or three tablespoons of butter. Have seen there? That's actually uh, ghee, but close more. enough. Huh? And here's the chicken, all oh, nice and beautiful. Slow, you're like fresh. Oh, am I? Oh, okay, well, I can put it back on. Give me a second. <laughs> I know, it's a force of habit. I'm, it, I feel like I'm in work mode suddenly, so I gotta calm myself. That's my problem. I, I, I do this for a living, so I am really, really. Huh? Next time you want me to talk about No, probably not. I just need to calm down. Like, I'm going, like, hyperactive. Like, I'm at work. All the stems. All those stems. Alright. Okay. Oh, what's up? Can you ship me the food when it's done? Oh, yeah, totally. It's going to be really cold, though, man. We're, you're lucky to get out and say, oh, I'm sorry, sir. But, yeah, here is the chicken. We're actually going to start doing the jalapenos while the butter takes its sweet time melting. And you know what? It's probably because I put it on low. That makes total sense right now. We're going to start doing these jalapenos up in a minute. Actually, you, know what? you can go over here. I'm trying to rearrange my kitchen over here. Ah. No, something tells me I should have put the garbage right beside me. <laughs> No, can you? Thank you. Trash basket, the most wonderful thing in the world. Alright, so, is he done yet? Is he there? So, we're going to do a quick explanation on, I know it's going to sound lame, brushes. I never do it until the one day I start watching TV. God forbid. Alton Brown, I hate you. So, this looks like, this is a standard pastry brush. Like, yeah. This one's actually silicone. I, I don't like the 
the bristle one because I found uh, like at my other my job currently the bristles fall out all the time. It's great when you have a piece of barbecue br chicken and there's a giant bristle hanging out of it. Mmm, yum. Now the difference between these two is this guy. There we go. Let's see if we can get that. Has these lovely little squares. Now this is a huge thing right here. When I go to dip the butter in, it's actually gonna hold the butter on better versus this where the butter sticks up flying off. Same thing with the bristle brush. Same issue. You're gonna have that. Um, so this is a wonderful thing. If you have one of these, get rid of it. Buy one of these. I don't know why I keep both of these on special like that. <laughs> so we're gonna just do a quick uh, paint job on these guys. And we can't use the oven right now because we have it occupied with the delicious French fries going on. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> so when can I come over for dinner? Hey, I called that, honey. Oh, he's a. Uh, you're getting your cut and shit now? Oh, that's awesome. Send me pictures! I'm not kidding. Alright. Just a little bit of butter on. You don't want to drench them in it. It's, I mean, you could pan fry these if you really wanted to. I don't recommend it because, well, my ventilation at my house sucks, so that's probably why. <laughs> tried to stir fry and it turned into hyperventilation mode because the whole house is smoking. Miko goes moves asking, that's a butter that you're brushing? Yeah, that's the butter I'm brushing right now. Yeah. And you can obviously microwave that. I'm using a saucepan because my microwave's unplugged. Alright, we're just gonna put this guy over here, have him wait. We're gonna start doing the jalapenos. For the poppers now, you know, just basic jalapeno. Um, you can get the sweet ones that like that are like orange. I think they're about gay size, orange and red. Those are nice for this also. We're just gonna use this because we like jalapenos apparently. So. And actually, there's probably enough food that we can invite my parents. Oh yeah, you can easily invite your parents. It, it's enough for four people and then some. Because look how much chicken I just made. So it's Eolande. Eland yes. Yes, you can come over for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, yeah. Hey, Pizza Hut, by the way, came by. <laughs> okay, we're just going to cut these in half, and we're going to remove the membrane and the seeds. The, the membrane, unless you like spice, you want to remove that. It's still going to be hot. It's not going to be like, oh, yay, but don't don't touch your eyes with this, by the way. I'm not going to rub them in there yet. Um, seeds, same thing. Probably want to remove those, so we're just going to do... Hi, what are you? Is your good technique? Yes. What you're gonna do is, and I'll show again, just gonna go and follow the line, curvature. Slowly. Very slowly. I know. Now obviously you don't probably want to use a French knife. That's what this is. I'm just gonna knock all the seeds into my sink. And for argument's sake, I'm gonna start throwing these all into the garbage. Um, probably better off. Nope, that is not the right knife. You're uh not the right knife. Hello? Nope, nope. Do I even have a paring knife anymore? I guess this is a paring knife. This is one of many thousands of paring knives I own. <laughs> so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to start from the, the tip, work my way in, just slowly cut all that membrane, curve underneath the stem, bring it up, and then just come all the way home, and it just starts coming out. And then just give it a nice little pat like you're spanking it, get all the seeds out. Yep, that just got out real quick. When you're going to regret not wearing gloves later, oh, I know I will. It's going to be great. I'm going to wipe my hands and my eyes, or when I go to the restroom, we're going to hear a unique noise. Well, at least my wife will. I'm just going to do this, about, well, I think it's like eight more times, nine more times. Yay! What do you think, 45 minutes will be done? Uh, 45 minutes, yeah, sounds about right. Okay. I'm just kind of giving up on trying to knock them into the sink, just for for sanity purposes, because we got we got to mix the cream cheese and everything still. It'll be all right. That's what paper towels are designed for. Question from Lancasters. Uh, what's up? He goes, move answer, but. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, yeah. We're gonna make um, cream cheese stuffed jalapeno poppers. We're gonna kind of go over. Nice thing about this is. You can totally deck them however you want. We're going to do a very basic recipe. But if you want to get crazy, which you could easily, 
Um, you could totally wrap these things in bacon. You can close them back together, wrap them in bacon, um, stuff them with cheese. We're going to do a super basic version because the nice thing about cooking, it's basically like playing Science Lab. You can do whatever the hell you want in it. Apparently, you need to update the screen recipe, honey. Oops, sorry. That's fine. I just caught it because I just noticed uh, somebody's face pop up on my on your screen. Because she's not... Ha I'm borrowing her phone, by the way, FYI. I think it sounds good. Excellent. How long does it fly? It's in Ohio. Take, if you think... Yeah, I know why I live in Ohio. I don't know. I haven't been to England ever. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go on the basis of five hours. If you don't get layover. It's anything like our train system, it's going to take longer. I think we, what was it, we looked it up, it was going to be 15 hours to frickin' New York. Not just from New York, frickin' New York. Bye-bye. Right. So many jalapenos. I quit. I'm done. The irony is, my wife gets to bask in the, the deliciousness of it all later. Right, five hours, okay? Oh, boy. I got so many jalapeno seeds everywhere now. Honey, we could make our own mace. Probably wouldn't work well, but, you know, details. And the nice thing, you don't actually have to do this in your kitchen. Here's the fun thing about cooking, at least I've found. Like, stuff like this, Netflix is a godsend. You just go and you get your little cutting board, you put, like, a sheet tray or something underneath it, and you just sit there and pay attention to Netflix vaguely while doing this. Makes time go by nicely, and you're not sitting there in the kitchen going, man, I wish I was done. Hey, you know, where's that freezer section? Same thing, we, we, we'd sit there and do this all the time. Like, we'd make salsa, Italian dressing, which is random. I don't know, we'd pr pretty much prep our whole entire week's meals while watching Netflix. Which, by the way, dinosaurs really had a morbid ending. For anyone who's as old as me and remembers that show. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys have any questions about anything we've already done or covered or going over later, which we're doing a strawberry shortcake after this. Mr. As a, Shush is asking, is it possible to just stream cooking videos on Twitch? It is not. I contacted Twitch. They said the only, the, the thing is you can't do it only cooking. You have to do actual streaming game content. Um, so that is something you have to keep in mind. Yeah, because I've been streaming Final Fantasy I don't know, the last couple of weeks and prior to that a miscellaneous or prether of other things. But I was concerned about the same thing, so just uh, yeah, just let you know, no, you cannot just stream cooking only. How often left for lemons is asking, how often will Boom be stream streaming him cooking? Um, I think right now we're at the every other week weekend thing. Just because of my work schedule. So that way we can kinda do a nice six o'clock ish where some people in from foreign countries lemons. Uh, can, you know, view too, and it won't be like 5 a.m. Um, I think next we were talking about for the next stream, which will be two weeks from today, we're going to do tacos from start to finish. The, the shell, the beans, everything for it. Next time will be the 22nd. Oh, 22nd? Okay, so 22nd of August. 6 p.m. EST, right? Yeah, 6 p.m. EST, yes. Yeah, they also have to be in the creative section, yeah. Yeah, because I contacted, um, I think there was a couple of big streamers that were doing it, and there was also some somebody who was just doing only cooking, and it's against terms of service, I guess. But for right now, anyway, they might change their opinions on the whole entire cooking only thing. You never know. Up till then, if you're going to only do cooking, my suggestion is do YouTube or Ustream. That's pretty much your only options at this time. So, we're almost there. Oh, Moo, yeah. Two How's more. your cooking going, Moo? Yeah, yeah Moo, how's yours going? You, you still have all nine of ten appendages, right? Oh, you'll be in Greece? I'm sorry, Lemons. Why are you in Greece, buddy? Bully old pile of friend. Probably work, I'm guessing, but... 
And uh, obviously you don't have to go as fast as me. To, you know, I've been doing this for 12 years, so. <laughs> I've got plenty of nicks and cuts. You don't want nicks and cuts. Go slow, especially on this stuff. Also, make sure you have the right knife for the job. You don't want this machete. <laughs> Even though, for some reason, I thought it was a brilliant idea a few minutes ago. Alright, we're almost done. Okay, finally. Last three halves. I hear laughing. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? I'm guessing bad. Like the smart family we are, we decided to go on holiday to a place that's going through a story of our lives. Uh. All right. Last one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can finally move on. <laughs> Good nine and a half fingers. Woot. All right. So we got some cream cheese. We let this guy out for a while. And, um, obviously, here we go, camera, yeah, we are. <laughs> yes, you can't see that in that camera that well. And an extra chicken strip, right, Moo? Yeah, yeah, there's an extra, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I got 13 chicken strips somehow now. I had 12 earlier. It's like Wendy's chili all over again. Oh. All right, so first thing first, well, I've been, I think I've let this out, I don't know, we've had this out for like four hours now. I don't recommend the idea, they, at least the FDA doesn't recommend you leave out dairy, but for this particular item, we are. Um, if, obviously, if you pull it straight out of the fridge and trying to do this, you could probably microwave it for a minute, and by a minute, I mean 10, 15 seconds, give it a twist, 10, 15 seconds, twist it around again, and uh, should soften up really good. Alright. We're going to season up a little bit of salt and pepper. We're going to get a little paprika to give it a little bit of color. Paprika seems to be my go-to thing. Uh, oh, you're missing a little bit there. I'm going to just use a fork to mix all this up because why not? Soften this guy up. He's a little stiff still. Obviously, you can use a mixer, food processor, get your kids to do it, you know, details. All right, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit, tiny bit of this just to get a little bit of color. And it also helps if you actually get in the bowl. That, that is a big thing right there. Did you put in for color? Huh? What did you put in for color? Paprika, just a touch, just a smidgen, and we're Gonna check our fries because my lovely timer on my oven just went off and reminded me, hey, you're baking stuff. And here's our fries. Yeah, that's good. Yes. What are they looking for? Um, we're looking for a nice golden color right here. We're going to put them a little longer because some of these guys aren't done just yet. But that's beautiful, man. That's a thing of beauty. We're going to turn them around too. Give them another, I don't know, 10 minutes. They, those, those things will be rocking out. Actually, you know what? We're going to go eight. So that was like uh, about 45 minutes, give or take. Why am I staring at the camera? <laughs> Keep on working this a little bit. Obviously, if you have gloves, this would be a lot of fun to play with. Just plastic gloves. It's a potluck. Who's going to get lucky finger? Oh. I hope I get the lucky finger. Does it come with this fortune cookie inside? Alright, almost there. Ooh, got some on my finger. Oh well. Life goes on. Alright. Yeah, that looks pretty whipped to me. We're gonna be using almost like spackle in here anyways. Uh, we got a butter knife for these guys. Actually, we need a sheet tray first. two silicone mats. We're actually put a little bit of oil on here. Just for non-stick purposes. Okay. 
And we're going to use that brush I said not to use. Just brush this sheet tray up. So we're going to bake these guys. You can obviously microwave them if you really felt the need to, or if you just didn't want to have your house feel like it's on fire in the middle of summer. I know a few of you. you don't like not getting messy because yeah this is gonna be messy all right it's like spread it on there nice and even not gonna be perfect just keep it going obviously if you have a piping bag this makes it look all fancy schmancy you can go right for it but we're gonna go very low tech today nah we're good uh maybe when i'm done with it if i have any leftovers yeah i totally take a storage bag We should be okay. There we are. This is going to go really quickly, thankfully. Question from Lancaster. What kind of cheese is that? This is cream cheese. Um, just whipped it. We whipped it a lot. Got it nice and room temperature. Put a little bit of salt and pepper. Dash of paprika. Akivari says, please start offering international food delivery service while streaming these videos. Oh, okay. Right on that. You know what? I heard you're really good at the internet thing, so you're going to help me run that. Left for lemons. We'll fund it. Ooh! <laughs> bonus! Alright, I'll start the Patreon page. We'll just roll with that. How's that, guys? Or Kickstarter. We'll do a Kickstarter. That seems to be the trend now. And now I'll just totally disappear from the country after I get funded. Wait, too soon? Too soon? I'm sorry. Alright, there we are. Just a little bit more there. Honey, I think we made too much cream cheese. I, I, you know what this means, right? More poppers? Yes, we're going to have to go get more jalapenos for this. This is the only way we can resolve this problem. Clearly. Now, obviously, you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You could totally not do them bare naked. Um, we are going to do a couple different variations. I'm going to put a little bit of cheddar on some of these. I'm going to put a little panko breadcrumbs on them. You can totally put bacon bits on these guys. Awesome. Migos Moo asked, did you add anything to the chicken mixture or just parsley after dunking everything? Um, in the, in the actual breadcrumb mixture, I added parsley and thyme. And that's it. The, the, I seasoned the flour and salt, pepper, granulated onion, granulated garlic, and a little bit of paprika. But, of course, you can add more stuff to it. You can add chili powder or some other crazy stuff if you really want to go to town. Get them, get them all Tex-Mex and add smoke chipotle powder, which is amazing, by the way. If you like smoky stuff. Now, another thing I've read that's suggested sometimes is uh, putting in buttermilk. It didn't feel like it being an effort. Because a lot of people are like, oh, you need to let it soak in buttermilk overnight. I'm like, ah, No. It's an extra step, and apparently it tenderizes it because of the acidity and the buttermilk, but meh. I'm lazy. And it wouldn't make a fun stream. Okay, guys, we're watching the buttermilk. Yep, it's hour five. I'm going to go shoot myself now. Yeah, so, anyway. <laughs> yeah, all over me. Who said you had to be clean and simple with this? Lancaster is asking, how long are you going to cook the jalapeno? Jalapeno is probably about 350, 15 minutes. You just want to warm them up a little bit, that's all. 350 Fahrenheit. Yep, 350 Fahrenheit. I don't know what Celsius is. I apologize to the people across the pond or in, uh, well, hell, everywhere else. <laughs> Us damn Americans in our Fahrenheit and itches and cups. Tablespoons. Actually, tablespoons are international, isn't it? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, we got tons of cream cheese left over. I, I know a couple of people that are more than willing to take it off our hands, I'm sure. Alright, cool. We got like eight more. Eight more! Hallelujah! Hey, three more minutes, and then we got the chicken and this to go in at the same time. That's not going to happen. <clears throat> Obviously, we can't double stack in the oven. Darn it! So, can't wait to get that new oven. 
have no idea what it looks like, but damn to be, it's worth it considering it's fifty-five thousand dollars around involved in that oven. <laughs> FYI, we're buying a house. We may get it one year. <laughs> I wish we knew how to adopt the metric system. Yeah, right. <laughs> Everybody else uses it. I mean, Christ, nine times out of ten, if you're talking about computer parts, they'd refer to everything in Celsius when talking about temps. Which apparently, if it goes above 70 Celsius, your CPU's in trouble. I learned that while streaming from the forest. Right. Almost. Almost there. This is definitely not going to be Picasso worthy. Again, you could easily pipe this out. This is not the case, though. And just do that, you can just buy a piping bag or... Actually, I have a fun little thing that's basically like almost like a pumper. Yeah, or not pumper, it like injects it. It's kind of awesome. Pain in the butt, though, to load. Alright, two more. Can I get it done before the oven goes off? Probably not. <laughs> oh, this stuff is all over my fingers. Hey, by the way, did I have that uh, bag so I can toss this in there? That'd be great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Alright. Behind you. Cool. Thank you. 16 seconds. Sweet. Alright. Alright. Get this little paws of mine cleaned up. Alright, time for the fries to come out. And I'm going to turn my oven down to 350 for the tenders. Or strips. Gosh darn it, I did it. Ooh, that's very therapeutic. Alright, and there's my beautiful fries. Can we get a crunch? Oh, kind of. Yes. So what are they looking for again? Again? Oh yeah, we're looking for this nice golden color. That means you put just enough oil. It's not blackening. You didn't over-season it. If you want to at the last second, if you didn't put any salt on, you can totally put salt on it. It should stick really well. But yeah, this is a little bit of rosemary, fresh rosemary. Salt, pepper, garlic. A little bit of granulated onion, granulated uh, uh, garlic. Yeah, that looks beautiful. And the, this is a silicone mat. That's why these things are moving freely. Awesome. All right, cool. And we're going to watch me as I load a Ziploc baggie, because that's exciting. <laughs> That's easily another know, six jalapenos. Lancaster is asking, are those homemade fries? Yes, they are homemade. I cut them from scratch at the start of the stream. Who's asking? Flour, egg, panko. Yes, flour, egg, and then panko. Correct order of operation. Yeah, I cut them at the very beginning. I did it in a, uh, I did it in some wedges, like seen here, nice wedge, and then I did it in a batonet cut, which is like this, like your traditional French fry. Obviously, the batonet cut cooked a lot faster, <laughs> but it's all in how you want to do it. Obviously, if you're not very good with your knife cuts and you just don't want to remove anything, these appendages included, probably better to go off and do the wedges because it's a lot easier. All you have to do is. Uh, quarter twice and get a nice eighth cut out of it. Come on, come to me my friends. Alright, one more time. Alright, not going to bore you guys sitting there watching me do that. Alright, cool. Get all the air out. That's good for later. Bye not, I didn't need you anyways. So we're going to wipe down again. We're not dealing with a uh, raw chicken though, so I'm not going to sanitize the table. But there's some fun jalapenos I can, you know, push in my eyes. Lancaster's asking how you cut the potatoes. Maybe at the end we can... Yeah, we can, I can totally do another uh, potato here in a few minutes. If you're interested, not a problem. I got plenty of them behind me. Five pound bag, it's 250. It's amazing to make your own french fries. So, um, okay, so we're going to do the strawberry shortcakes next. The first thing we're going to do actually is move these 
I'm actually going to move my camera a touch. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a simple syrup. We're going to take a cup of water. Actually, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to take a cup of sugar first, because I don't feel like having it stick to my uh, measuring spoon or cup. Just toss that straight in there. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. We're going to do water to um, sugar. There we go. I'm holding it in my hand. I actually have it turned slightly, so it's actually on there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. All right. And we're going to add a cup of water. Basically, it's a one-to-one -one blend. So if your measurements uh, vary by country, this will work. We'll just basically add that. We're going to bring it to a simmer because the fun thing about sugar is it caramelizes. And what caramelization does is basically you're going to either get a nice caramel sauce or you're going to have blackness, which uh, you don't want burnt uh, uh, simple syrup. It's wrong. So we don't want to crank it on full blast. We're going to put it on medium heat. And we just want to bring it to a simmer and then bring it back down. And while that's going on, we are going to cut some strawberries. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut all these at the same time. For simplicity's sake, hello knife. Actually, you know what? We're gonna be lazy. We're gonna use this guy first. And we're gonna remove all the stems. Hello, salt and pepper. Uh, Goodbye, salt. Twitch should have a section just for cooking. That'd be nice. <laughs> be awesome. All right, we're just gonna stem all these guys off, and you actually find if you have any special ones that need to be uh, removed from the rest of the group. Yeah, we're just gonna use a paring knife and just take the top right off. Am I getting that in the camera, right? Yeah, okay. There are cool beans. And this is a pound. Nope, we're on the strawberries. Yep, we are on the strawberries. I know I'm moving a little faster than I should be, but. I'm also paying attention to the chat. And not the... Well, it's fine. It's fine. Nobody's going to, you know, call you funny names yet. I am, though. Okay, this guy, this guy's beyond his expiration date. Goodbye. <coughs> you are the weakest link. Goodbye, sir. Right, keep on moving. What we're going to do, and the reason we're doing this now is because this gives you a nice flat surface to cut these on. You don't, you don't want to work on the side, trust me. I have, there's a reason why I've removed a fingertip or two. Learn from people that have some experience in this for a reason. <laughs> it's not fun. On the plus side, the ER gets to know you really well. They don't give you a gold card for coming in multiple times, though. Boo face. And the reason I'm going to keep this container is we're actually going to dump them all in here, back in there. Utilize everything you got. It's easy, it's cheap, and it's free. We're going to use the bowl again, though, for that exact reason. What we're going to do is we're going to take half of these, and we're going to actually start cutting them like this. Just keep your knife... Now, if I can show you. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm keeping the knife on the end, just keeping it there, and controlling it. My having my wrist pick it up and down. I'm not doing anything like this. I don't care what anyone says. Throw, doing this does not control your knife. You will do some damage. <laughs> We're just going to do that. Very slowly if you've never done this before. Very slowly. Especially when you get to those ends. I'm just going to keep on going. And our simple syrup, almost all the sugars dissolved. That's good. And I think we got about 10 more minutes on the chicken because I completely forgot to uh, put a timer on. How Whoops. long are we cooking the chicken for total? Uh, I, I want to say 15 minutes we're going to go for and we'll see what happens. Now the guaranteed timing or thing to keep in mind when the chicken, you're either going to want to cut it open to see if there's any pink in there. If it's pink, you need to go in longer. Um, or you can jam a thermometer in there lengthwise or the longest part of it and it hits 165 degrees i have no idea in celsius or i'm sorry fahrenheit yeah celsius we're, we're fahrenheit christ almighty um so you'll have to forgive me on that i heard google's a wonderful thing for that though just keep on doing this got a couple more to go what we're gonna do is once this simple syrup comes to a boil we're actually gonna toss these strawberries straight in so that way we got a nice strawberry infused simple syrup so we can put it, is it yeah, right over our uh, strawberry su sundae, sundae. <laughs> shortcake, wow. 
And I'm cutting these really, really thin. But you can quarter these. You can do whatever you want with them, actually, at the end of the day. For speed's sake, though, it would be a lot quicker cutting them thinly. Considering I'm doing it as a live stream. I don't want you guys bored, being bored out of your mind. Wow, look, it's Hot Boy and Starbase. So, sanity's sake. Yeah, you could totally just quarter these. I guess you could do it like this, too, if you really wanted to go to town like that. I don't recommend it, but... Alright. Well, that's what we got going on. Uh, too small. Alright, we, we can always play around with this. Ah, uh, that's why. That's good to know. It's good to know. Feedback is wonderful. Especially when we try to do this again. On the bright side, if they go back to your past broadcast, then they can just open up the... Yeah. This is also... Yeah, we're going to have it on our past broadcast for about... I don't know how long it... I think Twitch lets it for two weeks. And, and then... Highlight yeah. We're also going to put this... We're going to try to have everything in greens and everything on our YouTube page. With uh, instructions and all that. So we can get the actual blog set up. Then we can have all that information stored at one central locale. Actually, I'm just going to cut it all once and then we'll save half of this. Oops. I know I wasn't even paying attention. I just suddenly realized, oh my god, all my strawberries are gone. Go for it. Go for the gold. All right. Yeah, and the reason we decided to do strawberry <laughs> shortcakes is because we realized there was going to be a period of time where there's nothing going on. Because we're waiting for stuff to come in and out of the stove. So it made perfect sense to have a dessert. We don't have a vegetable, but eh, jalapenos are kind of a vegetable. I mean, cream cheese kind of dictates otherwise, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Who said we need to be healthy every day? I'd be healthy once a week. I had a salad yesterday. It was a taco salad, but it's okay, right? <laughs> We're going to do is we're going to take about half of these and we're just going to toss them straight into the simple syrup. And the rest of these guys we are going to play with later. We're going to bowl them up here in a moment. First, let's do a little bit of cleaning again. Because a clean kitchen is a safe kitchen. <laughs> Trust me. Before you know you got syrup all over it and stuff sticking and then you get annoyed and knife sticking and you get cut. It hurts. Yeah, I'll get some bleach out later and clean all the strawberry remnants. Oh, wow. And, alright, next thing we need. Angel food cake. Yep, I totally made it by scratch. Can't you tell? <laughs> and one pound brick here. You easily substitute, um... Uh, the... asking what's in the pot. What's in the pot? It is water, sugar, and now strawberries. It was a cup of water, a cup of sugar, and, uh, I don't know, half a pound of strawberries. Is that over high, medium? Medium, medium heat. It's over medium heat. Okay, and what we're going to do, first things first, cups. Got to kind of fancify these guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to chop this guy up. You can easily use a pound cake for this. We just happen to be uh, mother's necessity and borrow some angel food for the day. We're going to cut into strips. The one huge because you want to get everything in there. Mix up real nice. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start turning them on their side or I can just start knocking things over like a mess. Cut them in the strips now. Oop, or stab myself, that's a good feeling. Don't recommend it, by the way. Alright, and nice little dice. We're gonna, I'm going to toss them straight into the strawberries. No, don't do that! Yes, I will eat you. What? Nothing. I don't talk to my food and eat while I'm trying to eat it. That would be childish. True story. One more time. After this. Yes, I am cutting on the smallest cutting board in my house, by the way. It's not you tripping. No, 
not, because I'm going to mix them up and toss the strawberries in. Yeah, there's a method to my madness. Of course, I probably chose the wrong bowl for this um, operation, but you know. Yes, yes, I would love a bigger bowl because clearly I'm not that smart. All right, we're gonna crank this up a little bit. Thank you. All right, bigger bowl. Okay, now we can toss this all together. The reason is when we go to toss these in the cups, it's all mixed, so you're not worrying about oh well, there's not enough strawberries here. It's all all together already. We're just gonna use both hands, just toss them straight into the cups. I would have bled out by now. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. Okay. Almost there. Perfect. Let's so check and freeze well or store well. Oh, yeah, totally. Totally freezes really well. So you want to do a huge batch of it and then just start freezing it. My suggestion is if you're going to freeze it, put it on a sheet tray put parchment paper or something under it, like, not, not tinfoil, tinfoil rips really easy, and then put it in the freezer, leave it in there for like two hours so it kind of gets cold and hard, pull it out, put it in Ziploc bags, so that way it's easier to store. Would you freeze before or after? Uh, before. Easily, yeah, you definitely want to freeze it before you cook it. Obviously, you can do it after, but it's, it's microwave food, yeah. <laughs> It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's uh, gonna have a different texture to it. I got your back move. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Now I'm gonna let that go for a little bit. We're gonna hold off on these guys for a bit. And next we're gonna make whipped cream. What? Can I have the whipped cream moment? <laughs> okay. Now the first thing I got here is I got a metal mixing bowl. I left in my refrigerator. Cold is your friend when making whipping cream from scratch by hand. I implore, I implore this. If you got a warm bowl, it will take a long time. We got a cup of heavy whipping, whipping cream. It says a half a pint. It's one cup. FYI. So I'm going to give this a good shake. And because I don't remember anything off of my own top of my head, I'm going to ask how much powdered sugar I need for this, honey. Two tablespoons confectioners or powdered sugar. Okay. Uh, we're going to do two tablespoons, though. Sweet. The reason we're going to add the tablespoons of sugar is to give it some sweetness. The um, reason we're using confectioner sugar or aka powdered sugar is it won't have a grainy taste to it. You'll know yeah. if something made it from scratch if it has regular sugar in it. It will have a very, very grainy taste. Who sent you a picture of this chicken? Oh, did he? Oh, my sweetheart. I'll have to check it out. Alright. And then how much? We're just going to get a square of vanilla and call it a day. Lancaster's asking, so you guys are kind of going to create a blog for all of the recipes. That's the plan, sir. That is the very much plan. We're going to use pure vanilla extract. You can use imitation. Pure, I like a little better. has a better flavor. Right, I'm going to do a couple more drops. There we go. Now, obviously, you can omit the vanilla if you're really not a big fan of it. But that's what we're doing. All right, hi. All right, we're just going to let this guy go for a little longer. And what I'm going to do, the fun part of the stream, you're going to watch me whisk and whisk and whisk. This is going to go for a while. If you have a hand mixer, this is a fantastic idea to pull it out. If you have a food processor, this is a great time to pull it out. If you have a kitchen aid, please send it my way. I want two of them because I'm a klepto like that. <laughs> so... I'm just going to keep on doing this, and what we're doing here is basically we're going to add air into it. We're incorporating air, because that's what basically at the end result of making whipping cream is. You're just basically foaming it up because you're adding so much air into it. And actually, eventually, you're going to start feeling a little resistance. And what the cold air, uh, the cold is doing is it's actually helping trap the air more, because it's actually helping a lot of other things along. You don't want warm whipping cream when you're doing this. And hi, Sunlight, how are you today? You are blinding me, thank you. <laughs> so we're gonna go for a while. So thankfully we got this lovely sauce here that's gonna go for a bit too. Now, when applying this, 
you want to make sure the sauce is cold because if it's in a glass, it's going to crack. So that is the one thing I did not think through. Happy Vargas, did you really just put a hot whisk into your cream after feeling as cold as our friend? I didn't say I was smart. <laughs> but no, it's working. <laughs> See, it's, it's starting to thicken up right now. Yeah, well, <laughs> we only have one whisk, unfortunately, so mm, it happens. Never claim to be smart. By the way, this I'm making this look really easy. I've done this way too many times in my life. It does destroy your arm muscle if you don't do this if you don't do this at all. So yeah, it's sticking up really nice now. And the nice thing is you can't over whip this. Like you can over whip it and fun thing about whipping cream, you can leave it in like a mixing bowl, you turn that sucker on high for a while, you will get butter. You can get butter out of it. And you will know because you'll start hearing it throwing milk everywhere. Because you will get milk solids there are not going to conform with the uh, butter. So we've got some nice, wonderful stuff going on here. Oh, I know. That's what she said, yeah. <laughs> yep. I never claim to be the smartest cook in the kitchen. I'm good at what I do, though, once in a while. All right, we got three more minutes on the tenders. Oh, yeah. Now, this is soft peaks. You can tell because of the the whisk. All right. Uh, uh, oops, there we go. Is doing that little turn thing. If it's a hard uh, or hard peak, it will stay straight up. What's up? Like list. Of. Let's see. Lisiani sauce. It's a new follower. Oh, thank you. Lancaster ninety five is a new follower. Okay. Mr. Sh Mr. Shush is a new follower. Oh, there we or go. Mr. Perfect. S -S -H. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> and Total Panda is a new follower. Oh. oh, thank you guys for the follows. Was it Mr. Sh? Uh, Total Panda. Total Panda, thank you. Mr. Shush. Mr. Shush, thank you again. Lancaster 95. <laughs> Lancaster, also thank you. Lysiania. I'm going to butcher that. Lysiana? Yeah. Right? Okay, cool. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, that's it. That's it. Thank you guys for the follows. I appreciate it, guys. And I'm going to have a Gatorade. Uh, Lancaster 95 is asking. Whipping cream equal butter. Um, if you whip it too long. Yeah, because what happens is if you... Don't look at me, look at the camera. I know, I keep on forgetting the camera's right there. And the sun is in my eyes. Um, so what <laughs> happens is if you whip it way too long, which... This is whipped cream right now. Whipping cream, if you whip it for a while, it turns into whipped cream. If I were to continue to whip this for another 5-10 minutes, it will turn really hard in its butter at that point. So there is a certain point where you overdo it. But we've, we've hit that point. You, it will take you quite a while. Unless you have a ninja blunder and you turn it on high for about four minutes. But, uh... Two yeah. minutes on your Yeah, okay. Two minutes, sweet. Yeah, this is this is totally what we want. This is perfect. Actually, here, I'm going to play in the small camera and the big camera. Oops, big camera. There we go. This is totally what we're looking for. It will not fall. It's not moving. That's perfect. And let's check our little tender friends out, shall we? They look done, but are they? I do not have a thermometer on me. You'd be so kind. What temperature are they looking for? I'll tell. Don't worry. No worries. I know. Okay, so we're going to temp these real quick. I'm pretty sure they're not done yet. I'm away from it, Tiny. It's okay. It'll be okay. Okay, so we're going to temp it. we got a little bit stem metallic thermometer. There's a dimple. I don't know if we can show it really well. Uh, no, you can't. There's like a tiny little dimple on there. Okay, you want it to get all the way to that dimple. That will accurately read it. So what I'm going to do is not t do what I'm doing right now. Uh, get some tongs. Don't do what I do because I don't have feeling in my fingers. Uh, I'm going to jam it in, and this is what we got going on right now. Actually, there we go. Much better. Actually, that's for me. <laughs> and what we got? 140? 140, it's still going up. It's still going? Still going! Yeah, kids, don't touch this at home. 160? 160, yeah, we're looking for 165. All right, we're at 160. Yep, yeah, we're good. These are done. We've got tenders, my friends. Now we're going to toss the poppers in. Again, 15 more minutes. And those things will be beautified. Lemon juice. 
Lemon juice? Where? For the... Oh, right, yeah, we gotta put lemon juice in there. Thank you. And did you put vanilla extract in the whipping cream? Yes, I did. Alright, yeah, we're gonna do a squirt of lemon juice. I don't know if we'll do the cross often because I'm far too distracted. Um, can you grab me the lemon juice out of the fridge? I don't want to open one of these giant leaders. <laughs> going to help remove the bitterness. Yeah, we're going to add a touch of lemon juice. We're not going to add a lot. It's going to help remove some of the bitterness from the strawberry. You want to do this at the beginning before you start cooking that, right? Um, no, you can add it like, at the last minute. Just don't do it, you know, don't forget to. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we're going to do there. I'm going to clean up a little bit. And the last thing we are going to make I'm is... A, print up this list for you so you have Yeah, that would be fantastic. Actually, we could tape one right here so I can remember. Actually, why am I grabbing two of these? We're going to make a honey mustard sauce for our lovely little tender friends. <laughs> lemon is uncomfortable right now. Uh, that's fine. It's all right, Lemon. Come here. Be my friend. I need to squeeze you in some more stuff. I love Italian ice, by the way. So we're going to make a honey mustard sauce. And basically, it's three ingredients. So we got squeezable mayo, because I'm lazy and don't feel like coming, getting it out of a freaking can. Dijon mustard, which you can easily interchange. Oops, there we go. Air change to um, any mustard you want, preferably. I wouldn't recommend uh, horseradish and some of the uh, weird ones. And then we got some honey for funsies. And that's to sweeten it all. The reason we're adding the mayo, which I gotta open because I just bought this. Pop you open. Is for the creaminess. So if you really want a really creamy mayo or uh, dressing, just go to town with this stuff. We're not going to go too hog wild because there's only two of us here at the moment and we can make more later. Again, got to open this up because I just bought it. Now the thing with Dijon mustard is if you like Dijon mustard, you'll notice it has a bite to it. Uh, I'm more of a stone ground mustard guy. I love that stuff. But I like Dijon because of the sweet, uh, when uh, you mix it all together, it's pretty good actually. We're going to add a little bit there. And we're going to mix this up. And your nose is, it doesn't have that, you know, yellow color like, yeah, like some of the store-bought brands. But, that's because we haven't had honey yet, which honey is a wonderful sweetener. Yeah, a little bit more, there we go. And it will yellow that right up. Question from Lancaster 95. Sure. What cameras are you using? I am using, for the little camera we are using, uh, hold on a minute here. It is a Logitech uh, C9920. And the other one I'm using right now is a, if I can see it right now, hold on. Because <laughs> this is a, I know it's a Canon. Uh, Canon something or another, hold on. Actually, let me turn this around. Uh, V-I-X-I-A H-F-R-52. Yeah, um, you want to punch that in? <laughs> what was it again? It's a Canon V-I-X-I-A space... HF space R52. And I didn't want to do that. And the other one was a Logitech webcam? Logitech uh, C920 webcam. It's the most common one a lot of uh, streamers use. Yeah, there we go. And that's going to be our dipping sauce for the lovely tenders. Now, this guy's almost there, isn't he? Uh, yes, there we go. We got this guy. We should have done a half a cup. <laughs> oh well. Oh, no, it's, it, it, you win some, you lose some. Obviously, this sauce is done at this point. Now you can puree this, make it, you know, strawberry sauce. Obviously, we, want, we probably want to add more strawberries, but you win some, you lose some. Um, in the case of what we got going on here, probably not the best idea to add it straight hot, but for the show and tell purposes. I'm going to do it one of these with the hot sauce just to get an idea. Why am I bringing these all over here? Of course I have it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just ladle some of this, guy, this goodness all over. There we are. Just want to get it all in there. Probably should have done two straw. You know what it should have been is a pound of strawberries. That would have actually made everything better. Uh, careful, I don't know how, uh... They're fine. I didn't add a ton of it. So, and what we're going to do is, I'm actually going to get a spoon for this guy. 
Kevin says that the webcam in the cabinet is the best camera setup. Is it? Yeah, see. Well, I mean, you know. Hey, we, it's, it's a necessity. All right, and then we're just going to spoon that on. Beautiful. Now you can go feed your friends and family and be like, look, I swear I worked all day on it. Ignore the fact that there's a nickel bread thing in my pa uh, pantry. Sweet. Sweet. Green. What's up? Yay! Yeah. Hey, sweet green. All right. I think other than waiting on the uh, jalapenos, which they're almost there, they're warmed up. Actually, you know what? I'll bring them out of here in a second. We'll add a few toppings to them. Give them some variances. Oh, that's that one there. All right, cool. Um, I'm gonna move some stuff around so we actually get them. What's up? Oh yeah, yeah, you totally. Talk about your, uh, sleep, your streaming schedule, the rest of it. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, we are gonna stream some uh, regular gameplay tonight. We're not gonna do all uh, cooking all night. We're actually about the end of this. Actually, I was surprised. We're about an hour and a half in. Yes. That's good. What, what time do you typically stream? And what type of games do you stream? Right. Um, we're gonna stream tonight. I think we're gonna stream around nine. We normally stream weekdays at ten because of my work schedule and all that stuff. Um, I've been streaming a lot of RPGs lately, but I kind of do a variety of games. I've been sticking on the RPG stick for a while. Um, so that's what's going on with me. Um, we're going to be streaming more cooking in about two weeks on the 22nd, correct? Yes. Cool. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, yeah. We're going to do 6 o'clock Eastern time every other week. That way, we, you know... We're do, not doing just flu exclusively, which will be fun, but it is what it is. You um, What's up? Chopped up potato. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody asked about the chopped potato. Okay, we can do that. I completely forgot about that. I'm glad you brought that up. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Somebody asked earlier how I did the potatoes, which, for argument's sake, I'm going to grab a hot pad real quick so I don't burn myself, which is amazing considering. Because with these... There's two different cuts I did these. This is the batonet, as seen here. There we go. And then there's the wedge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how I did both those really quickly. Because I know that a couple of people are interested. Basically, you take a russet potato, like so. And don't cleaned. slam it down on the ground. Cleaned russet potato. Yeah, clean. Yeah. That's an essence thing there, essentially. Um, what we're going to do for a wedge, we're actually going to cut this in half. Put down flat side down so that way you're not cutting yourself because obviously you don't want to cut on this. This is, this is not safe. There it goes, flat on the side. And then we're going to cut in half again and then flip it over and then hold it with both fingers, slide it across, and then you get your wedges. And for the batonet cut, we're going to hold it like this about half an inch. And we're going to do really, really thick slices. And then we're going to cut again, about the same amount length. And then we get these lovely strips, like that. And that's all there is to it. Now, obviously, this one takes less skill. If you're not really sure about your cuts, I wouldn't recommend doing this offhand. I would start with this. Or you can buy yourself a mandolin, which are godsends, if you want to make ruffled potato chips and all sorts of other fun stuff with those. That is how you cut the potatoes. The only guy, 64, has just followed. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Only Guy. I appreciate the follow, bro. And I think we're going to pull out the, we're gonna pull out these poppers real quick. We're going to dress and dine them a little bit. We'll see what I'm talking about here in just a moment. All right. And what I'm talking about here is I've got some cheese flowing around here somewhere. I'm losing my mind. Oh, it's sitting right here under the parsley. That's why I didn't see it. <laughs> we got some cheddar cheese. We're going to put a little bit of cheddar on these guys. Just to give you a variety pack idea. So, you, you know, different ideas. You don't have to do one staple thing. You don't have to do what I'm saying for all, crying out loud. All right, we've got a little bit of that. And for funsies, we're going to just make these kind of, you know, a couple of these guys. Right, grab a little bowl so I can actually sprinkle it. There we go. Just kind of give it a little different. Just give you ideas, you know. You could totally do other stuff on here. You could put, I don't know, maple syrup if you want to go crazy. I wouldn't recommend it, but hey, eat your own. Adrian is asking, do you, are you doing cooking all the time? No, I will not be. I'll be doing it only every other week, simply because of my cook, of my work schedule. 
Uh, I'd love to do cooking all the time, but Twitch's uh, terms of service have said otherwise. When I actually reached out to them, they said new. They appreciate it if I at least did, you know, you know, did mostly gaming content, but so I will nice be doing it every other week. And then we're gonna put some panko breadcrumbs on some of these guys. Obviously, you could easily just do regular breadcrumbs. But the reason I'm doing this is because one, it gives a little bit of texture and gives a little crunch. So, like, while these, you know, you're gonna bite into it and you're gonna have, you know, a little chew from the jalapeno and that's it. And some the awesome creaminess of the, uh, the, the the cream cheese. This one, you're gonna get a little crunch, which is kind of cool. Was it? Oh, thank you, Mr. Adrian, or Miss. Appreciate it. So, real wait on those. If there's any other questions, please, by all means, shoot them out while I'm getting blinded by the sun. Oh, thank you, son. Oh, my God, it's my mother-in-law. Um, so, yeah, that is it. While that's going, I'm actually going to put some stuff away. I'm not ignoring it, I swear. Don't mind our setup, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, that's the setting up. Also, with that simple syrup that with the strawberries and everything, it actually, as it cools down, will thicken up. Alright. And... Is there anything else we got going on here? I can't remember now. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Actually, I need to put these in water. And the other thing, with the potatoes, make sure you put them in water, because they will start to brown. They're not browning yet, but they will soon. Ah, bowl, where are you? Which again, I'll, I'll go over it. This will start to bring up all sorts of debris, even when you wash them. And they'll start to turn a color because of the, uh, I can't remember what the stuff's called basically. But basically the stuff that turns the potato brown will start to leach out. It's like a white substance. I, I, that sounds so wrong. But you know, I'm hopefully, under, hopefully you understand where I'm elaborating. So, all right, and poppers are done. Turning off my oven. Kill the timer before it makes my ears bleed. Yeah, that's good. But yeah, you can obviously you can cook these longer, get the cream cheese to brown a little bit. We're not gonna go for that for timing purposes. What's going on here? Nice. I like the new idea of food make. And what we go. Oh, it's just time and effort, man. It's time and effort, Mr. Lemons. Oh, what else is going on here? Whoops. Those fries look awesome. They're really simple. They're really simple fries. Um, I think we're done, guys. I think, unless there's any other questions, we'll... Yeah, we'll leave the floor open. If you guys have any questions, if you have anything about what we did today, what's going on later, <laughs> let me know. So, yeah, yeah, we can totally go over everything again. So, again, we did the fries. This is rosemary, a little bit of garlic, salt, pepper, a little bit of paprika to give them a little color, a little bit of olive oil on these lovely things. And we got our, I don't know why I'm holding that anymore. Um, this is our chicken strips. They're not tenders. The reason that is because they're not from the tenderloin. It's just a chicken breast. We cut these into strips, and then we breaded them in the egg wash, flour, and some panko breadcrumbs. That's why they... Got that cool little crunchy thing going on. A little bit of parsley and um, thyme. There we go. And that's why these guys are looking like that. And then finally, we got our jalapeno preppers that we've been dressing. And by the way, this is really hot, and I don't recommend grabbing it right out of the oven again. Uh, two questions? Yes, yeah, so. I don't know if you answered this one. So you let them sit in the water. I'm guessing that's... Yeah, good. for the potatoes, let them sit in the water if you're not going to use them immediately. If you don't use them immediately, they will turn brown if you don't let them sit in water. And Moo is asking, uh, how long for the chicken in the oven? Uh, 350 for about 15 minutes is a good start. If they're not done, a couple more minutes. It depends on how thick you cut them. If you cut them thinner, like these guys are pretty not that thick. But um, if you cut them a lot thinner, it'll be a less time. So I would go 10 to 15 minutes tops at that point. And they need to reach a temperature of? And they need to reach a temperature of 165. Or if you cut them open and they're completely white, they're obviously done at that point. Um, and then we got the jalapenos again. This is with cream cheese, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, garlic, granulated onion. That's like my go-to seasoning of those two guys. And then we did a little bit of a dressing with some cheese on some, a little bit of paprika on some, and then um, obviously some panko breadcrumbs for some texture on a few others. Just a variety pack idea. 
And then finally we got our lovely strawberry shortcake, which we'll see right here. Um, that's just a simple syrup of 50-50, uh, one cup water, one cup sugar, granulated, boiled, and then a half a pound of uh, strawberries. I recommend going a pound because obviously I was winging the recipe today on a whim. So you'll obviously have a much more thicker sauce. And then we did a uh, cup of heavy whipping cream with a with two tablespoons of granulated or not granulated, powdered sugar, a little bit of uh, vanilla. There we go. I'm struggling now. <laughs> Whip the living out of that, and then just plopped it right on top. And you obviously put some mint leaves or something to make it look cool. Oh, and there's le uh, lemon juice in the uh, sauce. Oh my God, those I want some. <laughs> wow. But yeah, these are really simple. There doesn't require a lot of cutting. It's just real simple food. I felt like that that was kind of a good start for today. There was no real, you just have to have a basic knife, like so. Cutting board, and just all the ingredients and some time and effort, and you're good to go, guys. Would you like to plate, plate up? Yeah, we can plate one. We can totally plate one up. We'll, we'll do the variety pack thing real quick here. And, uh, Again, I don't recommend grabbing things straight out of the oven. And also, you guys can follow me on uh, Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. Find out what's going on. I might change menu things. Because originally, it was going to be a bunch of dips today. And I decided at the last second, that was a horribly wrong idea via my wife, who was the smart kid in the group. And put you here. And there we go. That's everything we made today, guys. Whoops, there we are. Uh, what's my YouTube? It is Boomwired. Same thing as the uh, streamer name. We might end up changing it to something. Uh, I think we're going to do Kitchen Wired, but we'll be waiting on that. We're not going to do it just yet. And we're actually going to put that right there. But yeah, we'll be playing up uh, this on there. We'll also be doing the, the, uh, with the, 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 the highlights and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. Chicken's in the oven. Woo woo. <laughs> all right, guys. I think that about wraps it up, unless there's any other questions. I know I'm doing a lot of prancing and ranting. Uh, I will get to work on our national food delivery business. All right, Lemons, I'm holding to that, buddy. Um, other than that, I'm going to do some, I'll be back later. I'm going to stream Final Fantasy XIV. Me, my wife, and a couple of my friends are going to do some raids and stuff like that. I'm not hardcore MMO or by any means, but if you guys want to shoot the breeze or ask me questions, all my, by all means, come say hi. Um, I'm going to get out of here. So I'm going to say bye, take it easy, peace out as always, and we will see you later. Bye. Stop, stop streaming, stop recording. <laughs>